so I was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, to a single mom. And my mother raised me in, with a public school education in the uh, city of Cincinnati. My grandparents were very instrumental in helping me to evolve into the young lady I've become. And I will tell you that my public school education helped me shape me into the person I've become. And so I came to Eastern Michigan University where I met my husband my second semester of college. Um, upon completing our education at Eastern, we moved back to his hometown, which was Detroit, and really got involved with the community, uh, making sure that we were part of the resurgence before it became popular for the city of Detroit. So I have, for the past 15 years, worked in a career in finance, mortgages, valuation, and other areas of finance. And as I worked in my career in finance, I also helped my community to grow. Um, some of the key areas where I was instrumental was helping to build up the community organization uh, from the area of distress that it was in at the time. And also making sure that my kids were a part of my community as well, making sure that the young people around the community were a part of being engaged in their community organization. My husband decided to run for office around 2008. He won an election in 2010. He served his time in the legislature, and at that time, we couldn't find an individual who we could groom for the position. We were looking and vetting people to run for his office. And I told him it would be disheartening to see all the wonderful work that you have done in this community and in this district go to vain. So that's when I decided that I was going to run for his seat. And so as I visited around the community, I saw where there was some disparities. Um, you didn't see businesses along the commercial corridor that were hiring individuals from the local community. And so that was the reason I had went to Lansing. I said, I want to make sure that I can help to fill the gap with some of these disparities that people have with transportation. Um, getting access to job opportunities right in their local community and support the small business owners to grow their businesses capacity wise so that they could hire your local individuals. And so as I knocked on doors as a state representative, I found where um, people were concerned about their auto insurance rates. And so that became the conversation as a state representative that I was having in my community. You know, we have worked on House Bill 5013, uh, which was designed to help structure some rate relief for individuals, but it's still a process that's in work. Um, of course, you want to change the redlining piece of auto insurance. That's something that's hurting um, urban communities, so that's something that we, tip we need to work on and also making sure that we're not looking at non-driving factors like credit scores and if you went to college and things of that nature to determine auto insurance rates. So that's another key area where we need to get some relief. We were five votes shy this last um, legislative cycle in November, but however, we did not, we're not successful at getting auto insurance relief. And in my specific district, 48227 is the highest zip code in the nation. Um, those individuals are, are being quoted astronomical rates for auto insurance. There is a significant amount of poverty in the, in the city that we have to deal with. I grew up in poverty, so I know what it looks like. And I live in the Detroit as well. And I understand some of the disparities that people have when it comes to job opportunities, when it comes to transportation and infrastructure issues. Those are some of the things that we still have to work on and also making sure that education is a priority for our young people. I think there has been quite a bit of improvements with Improved Detroit, making sure people can actually take the opportunity to uh, report any issues that they have with the city and the mayor receives those reports. But one, some of the key issues that I think are important, public safety, that's, that's priority number one. I don't care where you live. Public safety is very important. And we have to offer our police officers and firefighters and EMTs great health care coverages. We have to make sure that they're able to um, have a decent salary. And if you read a report recently, that was in uh, one of the concerns of why we have a, see an exodus of police officers in the city of Detroit. Um, so I think offering them be good benefits and salaries is a part of that. And so that's why I wrote House Bill 5174, which would provide an excise tax on our entertainment and amusement costs. It would take 
of that portion of your ticket cost and direct that back into police officers and firefighters health care and benefit packages. And lastly, making sure that education is a priority. I know that we spend money on education, but we're not spending enough money to educate our children in the state. And we want to make sure that children are set up for success, making sure that they're prepared for the jobs of tomorrow, whether that be in STEM, technology. We want to make sure that they're set up for the industries to come. I, I did my due diligence to make sure that I incorporated everyone from our neighborhood. We have a change in Warrendale community where we see more Arab and Muslim families in our district. And I think it's very important to make sure that they're a part of the neighborhood association. So that's how I reached out to individuals. But what I will tell you from a leadership standpoint, what I have done the first 18 months as a state representative is made sure that I brought those right wing Republic, Christian Republicans to my district with also Abdullah Hamoud. Uh, we did a tour in our district where we incorporated both our mayors from Ma the Mayor of Dearborn, Mayor O'Reilly, as well as Mayor Duggan to have those conversations with the community. And also we took them to the Arab American Museum and also introduced them to Lebanese cuisine in the um, Warren, Warren Avenue area. Because I want to make sure that we get past some of those barriers that they may have in their heads about the Arabic community and so and Arabic and Muslim community. I want to make sure that my colleagues understand who this community represents and who we are in this community. I want to make sure that as a state senator, that's what I bring to the table, that I make sure that I am building up the next generation of leadership to take over office take public office, take over social missions, making sure that the Democratic Party is strong and so that we don't fall short of our progressive agenda. I think it's very important to making sure that future leadership has the tools that they need. And so that's what I want to bring to the table. I want to make sure that the next generation of leadership serves the community well and that they have someone who can help support them. And so I think that's something that's very important as my role as hopefully the next state senator of the third district.